Okay, so the first item I have here on the agenda is locking a sign-in station. I know we've seen that before, but I thought I'd show it to you again real quick. Now, what is the reason for doing that? Well, typically, you know, if you use categories and activities, you would have the student pick the activities that are available at the center or their registered activities, depending. But let's say that you're, uh, you know, you know a student orientation or tour group is coming in. Um, you want to capture the sign-in, but you don't want to make them all pick it. Um, now, you could sign in as a tutor and do a class sign-in, but a better way here would be to lock the uh, sign-in uh, elements here. So I've got, uh, now it says it's implicit here, so I didn't pick a, a category because the activity uh, is going to be tour, so it knows the category to associate that with. Um, I picked instructor not applicable here, and I've picked Cindy Bright as my tutor, so those are locked. So if I save that and return to a sign-in, and this would be my tour group coming in, for instance. Now I could do them all as guest sign-ins, but if I have IDs, I can enter those. And I've got some late media. But here we can see I've got orientation is locked because it's a tour activity. Uh, my instructor is not applicable. I did not lock service type. And I continue and see it's asking, can I report to instructor? So that's, uh, that was the feature that we've hence fixed. Okay, but Dan Arlington is signed in, and, and you get the idea of it. It's already locked to tour orientation. Uh, my tutor was preset, so it didn't make me select it. Okay, so that's just a quick way to get everybody to sign into one thing. Okay, all right. Um, next thing is similar, it's information station. And this is a very simple setting, but it can be an important one. Um, for instance, let's say you have a sign-in station. I know some of you have run very busy centers, so you don't want students to do things like schedule appointments or take surveys or, or do a lot of other things that may tie up the line where the next student has to wait. So what you can do is have a completely different computer there and use that one um, strictly for appointment scheduling, uh, media checkouts, things like that. It's not a sign-in station, but it, the students can do all the other things that they would do. Okay? So when I do that, it tells me that I'm an information-only station. If I try to sign in as a student, well, it tells me it's locked. But then I can do things like schedule an appointment as a student, all the things that I would do oh, aside from signing into the center. Okay, so there's my new appointment, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a way to avoid it for the tie-ups of it being a sign-in station, um, but, you know, basically free it up to do whatever else you would do aside from signing into the center. Okay? Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is computer lab plug-in settings. Now, some of you may be running that and some may not. A computer lab plugin is the, uh, where you install it on each of the computers uh, that are in a computer lab, and it makes them each its own sign-in station. Okay? But uh, I have settings for that I just want to make you aware of. And if you're using it, you probably already know. But here in my plugin, there's quite a bit I can do to control my plugin. <clears throat> Things like uh, using the Windows login as the plugin login, so there would be no reason for the student to sign in to the plugin that way. It would just take the credentials from their Windows login and automatically uh, let them into the plugin. And you can see a lot of these are self-explanatory. You know, I don't want them to select tutors when they're signing into a computer lab computer, for instance. I can do that. Um, I even have logs. I can keep logs of all of the sign-ins that happened on each of those lab computers. And if I want to, I can even uh, FTP those, so send them up to a server somewhere where I store that information. Um, I can look at my lab status, and that shows me all of the various computers that have signed into the lab, so I know each unique computer name, who signed into it, uh, when they signed in, etc. If the lab computer is on or off, if it's, uh, if it's connected or not. Okay? All right. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to talk about, this is sort of a hidden one, um, but we have a feature where it's called AccuBuzz, and basically what that does is it enables you to notify the tutors when a student signs in. Um, you can notify one or all tutors that way. So those of you that run centers where you have a pool of tutors, 
that are just waiting to help students, well, they can be running the AccuBuzz uh, program, and it will notify them when a student signs in. Okay? Now, a new feature for AccuBuzz that we've already added um, that will be released here shortly, but that's the ability to do the same thing through the intake system. So when the student signs into the intake system, the tutor gets the, the buzz, and then they know the student is waiting. They can go uh, grab them and help them. Okay? Now AccuBuzz, by the way, is available from the tutor pad. Let me log in as a tutor here. Oh, and I'm still in information station, so one second. Oh, right here. Okay. Okay, so now I'm logged in as a tutor, and, oh, I don't have it turned on. Okay, give me a second. I should have set this up, but I want to turn on AccuBuzz. And that's in my tutor pad here. So right here, I want to show that, and I want to, let's see. Well, it's not letting me select AccuBuzz, so let's go launch AccuBuzz. As you can see, there was somebody tying up the computer, so I'm not as prepared as normal. Forgive me, and bear with me here. I'll get this thing going. AccuBuzz. Now, this is going to launch from the tutor pad, but it's a fairly simple application. So I can pick here which tutors I would like to notify when the student signs in. Um, or gets put in the intake system. So I'll say, well, Morgan Freeman, for instance. And I'm done with that. So now let's go sign back in again. <laughs> so here comes Dan Arlington, still has his late media. Oh, man, I'm, I'm not having a good day today. Now I've got everything locked. Okay, but this is good. You can see what we have to change to make that happen. So I'm going to go back and unlock. I'm painting myself in a corner here because I want him to pick the tutor. And I'm going to pick Morgan Freeman because that's the tutor that's going to get buzzed. So we'll sign into something here. And hopefully Morgan Freeman has that activity assignment. I believe he does. There he is. Okay, so now I'm going to sign in um, and report to instructor. Sure. So now Dan Arlington is signed in. He's picked Morgan Freeman as his tutor. And you can see students signed in, Dan Arlington with Morgan Freeman. Now, if I am Morgan Freeman, remember I said that I want to be notified. Well, the tutor is going to have AccuBuzz running and get those little pop-up messages. Um, whichever tutors you picked are going to get the pop-up message. So I picked Morgan Freeman. Well, Morgan Friedman got the pop-up that Dan Arlington is waiting to see him. Okay? So they would run AccuBuzz, each of the various tutors, or you could have one laptop running AccuBuzz, pick all the tutors, and it'll notify um, via that pop-up every time a student signs in and picks the tutor. Okay? So it's sort of a way to monitor who's in, who's waiting, you know, who picked which tutor. Okay? All right, so that's AccuBuzz. And again, I didn't have that on my tutor pad. But it's there. It was just grayed out. But I launched it here from my oh, Accu SQL folder. But the file is AccuBuzz right here. You don't have to launch it manually, though, because we're going to launch it right from the tutor pad. So the tutor signs in to the pad. They pick AccuBuzz. It launches the application. And then it's just waiting to notify when students sign in and pick that tutor. OK. OK. Now the next one I have is AccuPager, which is another hidden feature that is a, a nice feature. And what that's for is a computer lab plug-in computer. Um, you can enable AccuPager, and then from any of those computer lab sign-in stations, uh, the student can page whoever you choose, and they'll get the same si sort of pop-up message. So you know the student says. Uh, you know, I'm having, I'm having trouble on station 12 or whatever it may be, then that will go to whoever is uh, being paged. Okay, so I'll show you how that works. And I don't even have to have AccuTrack open for that if I don't want to. But
I'll go ahead and minimize it so I can show you this. And your lab assistant would be running the program here. Now I'm just going to go find it in my folder. Okay, and I have, let's see, somewhere in here. Let's look at the name. AccuPager. So I'm going to open that up. And it's going to say, enter my name. Well, I'm going to say, uh, let's just say, conference computer. Okay. Now, I've got conference comp. I'm going, to I'm going to close my, uh, let's see, AccuBuzz. I'll just leave it open. And then I'm actually, I've got the receptionist is going to, she's got the computer lab plug-in uh, running on her computer, and she uh, is pointed to the same database. So I'm going to have her page me now, which I'm conference uh, room, and she'll send a message. And if we, I don't know, I hope you can see down here, but what it's going to do is pop open a little balloon, there you go. Message sent from Dan Arlington on HP 1120. Can't open up Microsoft Word. So basically she paged me. She picked the name I just entered. And then I can monitor each of the various computers in the computer lab right here through my, my pager. Okay? So that's how that works. And you can have multiple people entered. You could have uh, a lot more than just lab assistant. I could have 15 different people that I could page if I wanted to. So it's sort of like, uh, oh, a messaging application we've written uh, just for AccuTrack. OK? Hey, Next Michelle. thing I want to show hey, you. Sorry, just getting in my office. OK. Just right, I'm going to mute um, it. It sounds like we have some background hard. noise, so one second. Okay. OK, the next thing I want to show you here that some of you may not have seen, um, but messaging. Now, I can't really show messaging per se, because it's going to be sending a text message to my cell phone but you'll get the concept of it. So I set up my options here. And remember, I have my um, SMS configuration. Now, by the way, I've got this live right now. So uh, the, my secret key and all that is showing up in that configuration screen. Um, I've hence re reported that to, uh, to Chatton, and he's going to fix that. Uh, I think that should be a password field. So we're going to protect that where people can't go in and see your, your Skype or Nexmo configuration. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and go here to Messaging Center. And by the way, another feature we've added, you know, this is just something we're, you know, we haven't officially come out with 12 yet. I know a lot of you may be running 12. Um, but there's a couple little at things that we found, such as when I do a, a text message, well, the subject and sender don't really matter, so they're grayed out. But I'm going to go ahead and pick Dan Arlington. He's got my cell phone number. So Arlington, there he is. All right, so I'll say, hi, Dan. Come to the lab, please. And I'm going to send that through SMS. I send that. Message sent, and then in a minute or two here, I'll be getting that. There you go. So I just got the text message on my cell phone. Uh, I take a look at it, new text message, and it says, Hi, Dan, come to the lab, please. Okay, so that's how SMS works. And by the way, the Nexmo service that I'm using here um, have dropped their rates again, so it's now a half a cent per message. So it's become extremely affordable. Okay. And I have SMS messaging in many places. Remember, in the intake system, um, I can message a student once they're pulled from the intake system. The intake system is just the waiting list, remember, that students sign in and they're waiting to be called. Uh, when I sign the student in from the intake system, I can send a text message to them. So they're in the, if they're in the cafeteria or somewhere else, they get their text message. They come to the tutoring center and have their appointment. Okay. All right, uh, the other one I want to, just like I did with the plug-in, but uh, WebLink, this is now called AccuSL. But just to let you know, there's a couple of little features I can set here. So this controls, remember, this is the web-based appointment scheduling module. So when uh, students are creating appointments via the web, um, I have a couple settings that I can set, like allow them to reset their password, et cetera. Okay? So just to make you aware that that's there, and WebLink will become AccuSL. It actually is. We just need to change the label here. Okay. 
Um, the next thing I want to show you is in my reports here, um, you can see I've got memorized and customized reports. Okay, So let's say, for instance, um, I have these reports and I'm running them, but I want to share them. Let's say I have a tutoring center, an advising center, or I have a, another administrator that hasn't created these custom reports. And as, if any of you have done customized reports, they can be pretty time consuming and difficult to, to do. So I can share those with anybody I want. Okay? And how I do that is I go to my database and I'm going to do um, export reports. Okay? When I click export reports, it shows me any memorized or customized reports that I've created myself here. So I can pick the ones I want. And once I've done that, it's going to create this report package for me. Okay? And I'll just put it on the desktop. Okay, so now I have a package created, and you can see it's right here, this export package. And what I can do is then email that to whoever I want, and then they would do an import reports, okay, and then they would get the, uh, the package contents. Now let's go back just to prove it here. I'll go to reports, and I'm going to remove the ones that I have, okay. Okay, so now I have no memorized or customized reports. Now I have another package that I want to import that was different than the one I just deleted. So I'm going to do import reports now instead of exporting. And on my desktop, I have a folder here. Let's see, it's called export report one. So I'm going to import my package. And here's what I've got, by activity, major, minor, by activity, a couple uh, there. And I've got this month. So I pick those, whichever ones I want. And then if I want to delete the report package, I can. Well, I'll keep it. And I go back to my reports now. And now you can see I've got the ones I just imported. Okay, so that's a real quick way for you to share any reports that you've memorized or customized with whoever you want. Okay. Once again, that's in database, and it's export to get them out and import to bring them in. Okay. All right. Let me see what's next here. Okay, viewing email logs. Now, this one can be kind of handy. <clears throat> For instance, let's say uh, you send a late media reminder or some other message to a student, and they say they never got the message. Well, you can go check very easily by looking at the mail log. Okay, and I'm going to go to my options menu. And then I'm going to pick uh, email settings here. <laughs> and you can see I'm logging all my outgoing email from AccuTrack. And, but right here, I can view my mail log. By the way, I've been using a mail server, the Gmail server, with SSL, which has been great. So I'm, I'm using a free Gmail server, and it's working great for me. Um, anyway, I go to my mail log. And you can tell I've got a grid here that shows all of the emails that have been sent out. Now I can dump this log and let it regenerate it, but you can see I can look at all my no-shows. Whatever has been sent as email uh, from AccuTrack is going to be logged here in my log okay, with the message itself. Um, and like most of these grids, if I want to get the information out, I want to get a list of my emails sent, for instance. Well, I can do F6 and bring it right to my Excel spreadsheet. So now I've got a list of every email that I've sent out with my email addresses um, right into Excel. Okay? So it's a real quick way to get that information back out and to monitor to see, well, was the email sent or not sent. Okay? All right. Now another feature that a lot of people don't use but is very handy, um, if I go to my student setup, I'm going to click on my students here. Okay, I'm going to pick my favorite, Dan Arlington. Okay, now you've probably seen all of these buttons along here, okay? So for instance, if I want to see Dan Arlington's appointments, well, I can click that button, and it's going to show me all of the appointments that, have been, that Dan Arlington has scheduled, and whether he showed up or not, uh, who the tutor was, etc. So I'm getting a record of all that. Um, I can do registered classes. If he's registered for any courses, I would see him here. Man, that, he's got a full course load. Um, any visits he's had, the tutors he's met with, for instance, the unique tutors. So he's, he's met with all of these various people for various reasons. 
Um, if he's a member of any student group, I can do that. And he's not. Um, et cetera, et cetera. But what I want to show you, and these are these are handy, but I've got this advanced button, and this is even better than what I'm doing here. So if I click the advanced button, well now I can pick and choose any of these reports. I can combine them together, and further I can do them for a period of time. So let me see this year, for instance, or last year, or whatever period I want. And I can pin this, by the way, to save it. But then I can say, well, I want to see appointments, and it says if I hold the control key, I can click multiple. So I want to see appointments. I want to see registered activities. I want to see his visits. I want to see uh, oh any seminars he's registered for, et cetera, et cetera. So if I pick those options, then I can preview them if I want to. But I can also save them as, as an HTML, which is a web document. I can save them as a Word document, save them as an Excel workbook. So for instance, I'll just pick Word. and put it on the desktop. And I'll call it combined, supposed to be combined, but I don't care. Okay, so once I've done that, well, let's go back and look on the desktop and see what we've got. So now I've got uh, combined right here. I did it as a Word document. And now I've put, now it might be better served to put it in Excel, but just to give you the concept, I'm basically looking at every one of those reports that I just picked, and they're all in Word. But I can do them all in Excel, I can do it in HTML, however I want. So it's a very nice way to combine all of the information you'd like to get for a particular student. Now remember, you can run these same reports in the Reports menu, but if you want a quick overall report for a particular student, well, this is a great way to do it. Okay? And again, to go back to that, that's in my Modify Students screen. I can run them individually, or I can do Advanced and do my Combined. Okay? All right. Now, I know we've all uh, probably seen the pictures that I have displaying of Morgan Freeman and other people. But just to let you know how that works, um, I can assign a picture to any student. I can import all the pictures for students and for tutors. Okay, so for instance, um, let's look at my tutor screen here. And Morgan Freeman, you notice, well, there's Harry Potter, there's Morgan Freeman. Okay, so I can upload from a file, or I can manually add these pictures. Okay, now what I want to show you here is how that works uh, across the enterprise. Now, for instance, if I point to a picture and it's right on my local C drive, well, other computers aren't going to know that that picture's on my C drive. So what it's going to do, it's going to look for where its shared database location is. Okay. And right here, application shared path. Now that's my C drive, which shouldn't make a lot of sense because it should be out on a shared drive. So let's say I have a shared Z drive. Okay. It's, you put the pictures out there on the shared drive. There's a folder that's called pictures. Okay. So if I put my pictures on the shared drive in the pictures folder, then any other computer that's pointing to the same shared path is going to share those photos. So they'll all see pictures of Morgan and of uh, Harry and what, whoever else, all the students I have. Okay? Now that's kind of handy, for instance, if I look at who's in, um, I can look at pictures for those people. So let's sign in, I don't know, how about uh, Morgan and Harry? All right, and I would do that through tutor sign-in, let's say, and Potter, and Freeman. And we'll sign them in to tutoring scheduled work. I'm not going to sign them out. And then if I go back to my who's in, let's see right here. Now I've got tutors, well, who's in and who's out, right? But I can show pictures, and then I see Morgan, I see Harry. Okay, and, and those pictures appear in lots of different places. Um, you can even use a picture to verify who the student is when they sign in if you want to. So there's lots of different places you'll see pictures, and that's how you uh, share them. Remember, put them in the shared path, and you want to put them in the pictures folder. Okay, and then everybody will get to it. Okay? All right, another one that I think I've shown you, but it's kind of handy, is uh, this is for emails. Okay, Remember, I can send out an email confirmation um, for my appointments, and I can set those any way I want. 
Now right here is the text version of the email, and sure, I can customize that and make it however I want, but I can do it in HTML too. So for instance here, I've got, uh, this is my uh, new appointment student message, and I can do anything I want with that. I've changed my font here. Um, I can change my grid, etc. I can actually change my HTML source. So if I want to build a web page, um, you know, using, I don't know, Dreamweaver or, or something like that, I can do it in HTML. And you can see even here I've got styles. So I can change my fonts. I can do a lot of different things. So I have a lot of power with how my emails look when I send them out to students or tutors. Okay? Just to make you aware that that's there, and I know I've mentioned before, but over here, these are merge fields. So for instance, if I want to add a new field, and the way a merge field works again, it's going to look for a particular email it sends out. It's going to find out what the appointment date is for that appointment, and it's going to merge that data into the email. It merges who it's from, who it's to. Every one of these fields are being pulled for the database for that particular appointment. Okay? But I've got other ones available. So if I want to drag in a tutor email, for instance, I can just drag that wherever I want, and of course I could put a label, a text label above it. So now when it merges this uh, mail, it sends out an appointment reminder to the student. Well, it's going to include the tutor's email and the tutor's phone number now in that email. Okay? So that's basically how that works. And I know I'm going really quick through this stuff, and I do that because, you know, time is short here. But if you're not sure how some of this stuff works, you're curious about it, hey, what did you do with that AccuBuzz? How did that AccuPager work? Just send, a, send me an email at support at accutrack.org, and I'm more than happy to uh, show it to you. You know, we can even do our own go-to meeting if you want to see it again. So, I mean, primarily I do support, so I'm here for you guys if you have questions about any of this stuff. Okay? Okay, the next one is a real simple one, but it's terminology. And that's right here. I've got my terminology button. And here I can replace, well, the way that the words appear in AccuTrack. So I have something called student here, but I can make student into anything else I want it to be. So let's make it people, for instance. The, pearl, the plural of people is people, so OK. Now, I think, we'll try it, but I think I might have to get out and back in for that actually to take effect, but let's see here. Yeah, see, it says students. I don't know if I can fake it out or not. No, I think it's going to make me sign back in. And set up people. So now I've got people set up instead of students set up. And I can change that for any of those items that appear in my terminology. Again, it's options, general, and then I press the terminology button. Okay, so any of these things that you see, you can replace with your own term and your own plural term. Okay, uh, next is right next to that, backgrounds. And you can see I've got a different background image here. But I can do a background from a file. I can say no background. Um, so I can change the look of however I want AccuTrack to be. So let's say, I don't know if I have anything here, but let's go to Program Files. AccuSQL 12, and backgrounds. So I've got, you know, some of the old tried and tested ones, but I can do any one I want here. So, for instance, I want to change it to, I don't know, AccuSchool, for instance. So when I do that, that one's kind of ugly, but you get the idea. So then now my background has changed um, for all my screens. It's now the new style background. Okay, And you can design your own and make them any way you want. Now, just to let you know, Let's take a look here. The one I was using is uh, trying to find the actual size of the. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I've designed that one at 1800 by 1350 pixels. So that's going to cover most, uh, you know, most uh, monitors that I find. So 1800 by 1350 seems to be a pretty good number for, for the backgrounds, okay? All right. 
Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about, and I hope uh, some of you have tried it, is the Query Generator. Now, Query Generator is an extremely powerful tool. That It's actually my favorite thing in AccuTrack. But that enables you to build your own queries from multiple different tables in the database. I'm not stuck, for instance, running a, a student report or a tutor report or an activity report. I can run a combined, well, I want to pick the following three fields from the activity table, the first, last, and email of the student, the uh, sign-in time, the sign-out time, the tutor's name and email. So I can build a query any way I want from multiple tables. Okay? But I want to show you a little bit more about Query Generator. And I'm going to do a new query here, for instance. Well, let's say that we're going to do something from, uh, how about sign-ins, sign-in logs. Okay? Now I can pick the fields. And by the way, if I pick this, it'll pick all the fields for that particular table. But I'll just say I want login time, log out time. I'm going to get the student's last name and first name and email, let's say. Okay. All right, and I'm going to talk about this query in a minute because I think this one's important. But for now, I'm just going to go next. And this is my sort order. So I can say, well, I want to sort it on the student's last name. Okay. Now I'm going to save the file. And let's put it back up here. Uh, sign ins. Let's just call it sign ins. Sign in stew. Okay, so now I've got that report. Well, we can preview it, and that's the records that are in it. So I could select all of those. But what I want to show you here is now I've got my different formats, okay, and I'm going to talk about this too. But I can do it as a text file. So for instance, uh, if I want to get all my activity assignments out of AccuTrack, well, I could do that so easily in this custom query. Boom, do it as a CSV file, and then you know, maybe assign a local lab to it and then re-import it back in. I've got my activities. I can put them in my local labs. So you can get almost any of the data you want out of here. Um, Excel is a nice format if you want to exchange data with other applications. Um, HTML, well, that's web. XML, um, excuse me, I said Excel. I meant XML to exchange with other applications. Excel, obviously, is a spreadsheet. Um, now, column your format, it's hard to say column your format, but that's uh, basically a, a generic sort of view of the report. Um, I can create report and customize. That's going to put my merge fields in um, for the report that I just created, and then I can pretty it up. I can add whatever else I want to it. I can design my own report, and then it'll pull the data from it. Um, existing report format, well, that's the canned report format that we already have. And mail merge, I did that in an earlier webinar. But I can pull all the records out and then create a, a mail merge in Word. It'll remember the records that I picked. So if I have the student's email, for instance, well, I could mail merge and send an email to every single person that I have in my report here. Okay. Well, what I've done is I've saved the report. So I'm going to close the form now. And I'm going to go back to my query generator. Now, if I wanted to, I could do new. I could go pick activities, or yeah, excuse me, sign in, right? Sign in date and time. I could pick the student. I could pick all that information over again, but why bother? I've saved it. Now I can simply load that. It's going to find my uh, form that I just created. I open it, and now it's already got the data. Okay? I mean, I don't have to build, I don't have to go do query generator again. I can save these and just run them automatically here. Okay? And I don't know, let's see what data we have. I know we'll look at it in. Oh, how about CSV, for instance? And I can save my CSV file. And it say I don't, I don't remember where I saved it, probably the AccuSQL folder. But it created the, the CSV file in whatever folder I just picked. I probably should have been more careful about where I saved that. Yeah, here it is, stew.txt. So if I look at that, well, there's my data. Um, and it's all in uh, comma separated value format. Okay. Now let's go a little further with this. Okay. Now I want to show you something here. I'm just going to go look at my my people groups, and I've got some at risk students here. Okay. Now let's say I want to run a query generator again, and I want to get a list of my students, for instance. Um, so I'll pick. Where is students? Uh, am I blind here? 
students, okay, right here. So I want to get my students' last name, first name, and email, for instance. Okay, but I'm not done yet because I want to get them only for people that are in my at-risk student group, okay? So first name, last name, email. Okay, so let's look at my properties here. Well, there I have group name. So I'm going to say my group name is equal to, and I'll make it at risk. Okay, so I've added that filter now to my report. And remember, I can group on whatever I want. I can save the file here if I want to. I don't have to. I can just finish it and then look at it right here. So now I've got the following one, two, three, four, five, six students. Well, you can see I picked all of my student records, but this is all of my at-risk people. Okay, so I basically used a filter that said uh, group name equal at risk. Okay, now let's go a little more. I've got another one I can show you here. I'll do a new one. And I'm going to do sign-ins again. Okay, and this time I want the login time, logout time, oh, the student last name, first name. Um, I want the, let's say, activity category and activity. Okay, I'll go next. Okay, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a filter based on the time, or the date in this case. So I'm going to say, well, I want the student login time. Now, that's a little confusing because it really is date. It should change. But I'm going to say it's greater than, and I'm going to put a date in here. Okay, so show me all of the students that signed in with their login, logout time, activity, category, and activity, but only those who signed in after 10-1-2012. Okay? So I look at my report. Well, there's my records, and sure enough, my login time, if I go look through my login time, well, it's, I have 2 or 10-1, I said 2, I meant 10-1, but up through 10-17. So that's all of my sign-ins with the fields I wanted, last name, first name, category, activity, etc. Okay? So it's a real nice way for you to run reports if you're saying, well, I only want to see sign-ins, you know, from the 1st through the 15th, but I want to get all of these custom fields in that report. Well, here you go. You can do it right in custom queries. Okay? And we built this one, as I've mentioned, because, you know, we spent a majority of our time going in here and building custom reports. That's why we have so many reports in the regular report screen here. But we decided, you know, it's just, it's not worth our time to go in here and build report after report for people because your needs are so varied. So we wrote Custom Query Generator. It took us over a year just to write that one piece because it's so, you know, there's a lot of code to join all those tables. But that's a real powerful tool, and I would recommend you all try that and remember your filtering. Okay? All right. Um, just a real quick uh, uh, look at report uh, scheduling um, to show you. First of all, let's look at our instructors table here for a second. And I've got my instructors here. Remember, instructors are people that teach a course. And you can see I've got emails for those instructors, okay? Now, I can send scheduled report to all, reports to all of my instructors, but they have to have a valid email address, okay? So when I do that, I go to my options here. And in activity screen, I can say ask people, remember not students anymore, ask people whether to report session to instructor. And I can set the schedule. Sure, I want to do that. Oh, I've got from September, but let's say September through how about the end of November. I want to run the report. The period, I run, do I want it for this semester, this week, this month, whatever. Um, if I'm, I can pick the days of the week, I want to run that. So let's say every Friday I want to send this report at 6 o'clock. Um, and I want it to be, well, it wouldn't make sense for this month. What it, it would have to be this week. So that would automatically send the report out to every one of the instructors that um, the student has picked. Now, what do I mean by has picked? Okay. Now, I can show my instructor's box when a student signs in. I can even make it a required field if I want to. Okay. And just to remind you, excuse me, the instructors are who teach a class, but the instructors are signed to the activities. So if I go here, oh, let's look at uh, anatomy and physiology one. Well, I don't have an instructor on that one, but I'm going to say, you know, Woody Allen teaches that and uh, Chris Columbus teaches that. So now I've got the instructors that teach my Anatomy and Physiology 1 course. When the student signs in now, 
one of the fields that I have them picking is instructor, and I said anatomy and physiology one. So I'll pick Woody Allen, and I sign in, and now it's saying, are you sure you want to sign in to an, oh, I'm sorry, that, yeah, yeah, I want to sign in. The first time you pick the new one, it does that. But what I really want you to see is we'll pick Morgan. And here we go. Can we report this visit to your instructor? So it knows I picked Woody Allen here. It knows Woody Allen's email. So now every Friday at 6 o'clock at night, it's going to send a report, which is a PDF attachment to an email, to Woody Allen and every other instructor the student picked. And it's going to show them the sign-ins, in this case, for this week. Okay, So that's how you schedule an overall report to go to all the instructors. And just real quickly, you can, that's member all instructors, but now I can do individual reports. So, well, I'm not, I don't care about instructor reports. I care about, uh, you know, people attendance in this case. So I can schedule that report, and I can pick my filters however I want that to appear. But it's the same sort of thing. The thing that's, that's different is I have to type an email address here because it's not pulling it from the instructor table anymore. But I can say, you know, I want this to go to my director. So Friday at, uh, I don't know, let's say 2 o'clock, whatever dates I want, I want this to be emailed. And I can say the subject is here is your, you know, monthly attendance report to my director. I can carbon copy somebody. Here's the message body. Um, I can even put that in a folder if I want to. So it'll run out every Friday between the 17th of October and the end of December, and it would, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it would send that email with the subject to my director or whoever I specify here. Okay, so that's how you do an individual report scheduling versus overall instructor scheduling. Okay? All right, and then the last thing I'm going to show you here and then I can open it up to questions if anybody has any. But I keep pushing this, and I do it on purpose. This is the accu.uservoice.com. And we're starting to get a little bit more in here. But this is where you submit your ideas to us. So all of the stuff that I just showed you, pretty much every bit of it was submitted by people like you, like users of our application that say, hey, you know, is there a way it can do this, that, or the other? So this is where we're collecting all that information. So if you see some shortcoming in AccuTrack or you wish it would do something it doesn't do, well, here's where you go and submit that. So we do this for each new release. Like 1202 is going to be the big release that we send out. Now, we're going to fix bugs if we find them in 12.0.3 version. You know, for sure, we fix those. But we also add features. So when the next one comes out, we're going to look at here. And I can tell you I've got six votes for add student ID to the intake system and who's in. Well, that's leading the pack right now, I think, on votes. So that's going to be added to the next release of the software because we're going to look at the ones that make sense, of course, but make sense and have the most votes, and that's how we're going to continue to uh, add features to the software. So if you see something that, that we don't have, we'll put it in here and we'll add it for you. Okay? I mean, within reason. We, you know, we can't make it uh, butter your bread, of course. All right, so what I'm going to do here is unmute everybody if I can. Okay, and I should be able to hear you now, and I'll look in my chat window, too. But if anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead and ask them now. Okay, I've got a few questions in the chat window. So the first one is, can I print a copy of the email log? Well, let's see. I think I can actually save that uh, in report format. So let's go back to our uh, email settings, view the log. Now I pressed F6. And that uh, put it in Excel, but if I press F5, well, that's going to be that's going to put it in the report format. And then right here, I've got a print, so I can print that report right from my report viewer. Okay. Now, by the way, I, I'm just so used to F5 and F6, but I can right click, I believe. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I can't in this one. A lot of them say print report, show report. So this one, you have to know the shortcut key: F5, report viewer, which I can print. F6. Uh, exports directly to Excel. Okay, uh, the next question is, when will version 12 be released? Well, that's a great question, and we thought it would already be released, 
But uh, we've been really putting it through its paces. And by the way, our beta testers and some of our early implementers um, of AccuTrack 12 have put it through its paces and um, have reported some bugs to us, some things that we want to hold it back until we're sure it's working, just like that thing I just saw with the locking of activities or instructors. So, um, you know, those of you who have implemented 12 early, thank you for uh, bearing with us and, and submitting all you have to us. Um, the short answer is we're probably looking at, I would say, no later than the end of October. It's going to be a formal release of 12. Um, if you're a Platinum user, Platinum subscriber, um, we're automatically going to send emails to everyone, or excuse me, excuse, <laughs> emails, FedEx boxes that are going to contain the CD uh, for the 12 installer. So you can download it electronically, but we'll send you the CD as well. So uh, again, probably uh, no later than the end of this month. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? You guys are taking it easy on me. Okay, and remember if you want to call me and you have any follow-up questions or anything that you saw that I showed you too fast and you're not sure and you want to, want to see it again, just email me at uh, support at accutrack.org and uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, call you or we can talk about it and I'll uh, you know, further explain any of these things that I've shown you. Okay, and I thank you all for coming out. Talk to you later. <laughs>